And then you gotta go. Welcome to the Creating Creatives Podcast, now presenting my mommy and daddy. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Creating Creatives, the podcast. My name is Roy Sampson, and this is Shelly Lloyd Sampson, my beautiful wife. Hi. And if you have not <laughs> been able to watch us on YouTube, check us out on other podcasting platforms such as Google Podcast, <laughs> Apple Podcast, Breaker, Anchor, all of them. Just just look us up on all of them. We should be on every single podcast platform out there. We got real professional real quick. Real quick. Especially this guy with his voice and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you... Uh, would like to do us a favor, just give us a review, a five-star review. It will help other people like yourselves find our podcast. And yeah, let's get started. Yeah, today's topic is a little lighter, a little funner. A lot more fun because we're going to be talking about our dinner games. Yes, games we play with our kids at dinner. So uh, it's is great because we play them when we go to restaurants so they don't have to use their iPads or and phones or, or phones. anything and it allows us to really connect at the table because Bond. yeah when Roy comes home I just want to talk to him about adult stuff and he just wants to talk to me about adult stuff and the you know the kids just want to play and talk to him and then we have dinner and so a game really just helps us to kind of focus everyone all together at the table. Well, in some of these games, as you can tell, it actually helps us bond with each other and get to know each other, yeah. which um, I really do not want to lose touch with my children. I don't want to be one of those dads that, you know, five, seven years passes and I'm like, I don't know what my kids like to eat. Yeah. I don't oh, know what they do on it, their on yeah. their when they're resting you know yeah. like i don't know what books they read so some of these games kind of help us to know the kids a oh, little bit more most as well. of them do yeah they tell it helps <laughs> us to figure out what's on their mind and they get to know us as well yeah. so let's start off <laughs> all right with our favorite game that you might have seen on one of my videos i'm sure everyone knows YouTube this videos game. is would you rather no uh, would i rather is the first no would you rather would you rather is Just the joking. first one would you rather so normal for those of you who've never played it before it goes uh, would you rather pick your nose and eat the boogers oh, or eat my boogers? See, he does. He always does the grossest ones. Yeah. I would rather, I don't know. <laughs> you should hear the kids. Those are so far off. Yeah. I like to do the like fun sensory ones. Like, would you rather swim in a pool of jello or swim in a pool of M&M's? Oh, yeah, that's a hard one. That's yeah. a difficult one. The One of the reasons I choose, I, I really choose those really difficult ones. I mean, not boogers or anything like that, but that's some really so difficult, difficult ones because I want to get them into the um, critical thinking to really think about uh, those decisions. And some of the questions I ask are actually classical, philosophical, theological ones that I heard. He goes deep from my philosophy class and the answers that they give are amazing yeah okay next is <laughs> oh i like that one. yeah cliffhanger because i want to do something with it later oh okay okay so next is would i rather yeah this is a, a little twist we put on it's would you rather with a twist and yes you have to guess what the other person would do so if i say would i rather make art all day or study all day what do you think the answer would be, Roy? Yeah, so I think she would rather make art all day. Yes. And then the kids would answer these questions, and sometimes they will get in on it too. Or Zoe knows that Zach is the only one oh. who knows the answer, and she says, would I rather? They're so good. They're they so know each devious. other so well. Yeah. And they'll look at each other, and we know they're stacking the deck. Yeah. Uh, another version of this game is sometimes we'll ask, what is my favorite? Yeah. So what's my favorite color? blue yes so she knows me so well <laughs> right so watch out if you ever play one of those 
uh, trivia games with the kids, we know yeah. each other fairly well. Yeah, except the kids always change their answers because they, they never change. want us to get. What's them your right? favorite color? Zach is or is orange one day and then it's blue another day. Yeah, and, yeah. So he's always changing her answers. Pokemon's very big. What's who's my favorite Pokemon? <laughs> I only know three of them. So <laughs> yeah, Tristan memorized all of them. He's he's <laughs> had the compendium under his pillow for. Ever uh, and he knows all the evolutions. Yeah. So yeah, those are two games. Would I rather, or, or what's my favorite? And would you rather? Yeah. The next favorite is the alphabet game. We love this one. Fairly it, simple. You can play it with so many different topics. And what you do is you start out with A. We're gonna use the topic. You have to choose a topic first. So let's say the topic is food. So then we'll go around this table. And there's two ways to play. You can either go and you do alternate person and letter so i would start and i would say apple and then you would say the next letter b is broccoli and then i would say c for carrots or or you can go around and everyone will say a uh, food that begins with a so i would say asparagus artichoke apples etc etc cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> what gets funny though is that it's gone to the point where Zachary, uh, Tristan, and Zoe know that Zachary doesn't know that many answers, so yeah. they'll let him go first, or they'll give him answers. Yeah, like it ends it's up really being a cute. negotiation thing. Like Zachary, you can say asparagus, <laughs> and I'll say something else. Yeah. Or yeah, because they they know the rarer words. I don't know why. I have more points, or they're like yeah. more prestige. You've got the word. to learn a lot of different types of food through doing this. Yeah. We never really get past, I don't know, half the halfway through, and that's totally fine. That's we fine. play it as far as it goes, and then conversations start, and whatever. It's kind of a like lot a of fun laughter. conversation, laughter. Yeah, we'll do um, food. We do uh, games, colors, animals are just some of the topics that we do. Um, games is a fun one. It's a little more complicated. Tristan is the game master mm -hmm. over here, so he loves doing the alphabet game with games. Cool. Next up is merry-go-round storytelling. <laughs> it's a fun one. We play it in, we don't only play this at dinner, we'll play this in the car. Well, actually, we play a lot of these in the car too. They these, want to play it before bed. Yeah, these are great road trip games as well. So um, Mary Grant storytelling <clears throat> is someone will start the game. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Zachary. And your turn. And Zachary went for a long walk in the woods at afternoon time. Yeah. And then you pass it on to the next person who says, Zachary had a bunch of chocolate in his pocket. And since it was hot, it melted all over his pants. Oh, your turn. And then it just goes on and on and on. And it, it goes from, it never makes sense. It goes always goes from ridiculous to even more ridiculous. Yeah. Until somebody decides to end it and then. Yeah. yeah. But it's usually just them cracking up at what happens. Yeah. It's a pretty fun one though. Yeah, well, and sometimes it we we also sometimes it goes serious yeah. because one of the mm. things that we've told them we've also talked to them about storytelling and stories are just a story is about somebody who had a problem and this is what they did and so sometimes they'll actually mm -hmm. apply that formula in their little little pocket. They're going to be amazing storytellers. Yeah, they are. When they they already older. are. Yeah. Yes. They're great storytellers. Next game. I spy. With my little eye, something red. <laughs> yes. Is the record button on the camera. <laughs> right there. The, yeah, the light. Um, yeah, we'll do colors, rhyming words, uh, letters, something that begins with the letter. Um, sometimes we do smells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I smell with my. Oh, yeah, we do stuff like that. Yeah, we do totally weird. do stuff like or that. Or that sounds I like. I smell with my little nose. Like, we do oh all kinds gosh. of weird things, yeah. but uh, it's fun. It it it's fun to get a bit more creative with it and yep. um, lighten up the mood. And it's a, again, I hear with my little ear. Yeah, yeah. you could totally it's, use all the senses for the iSpot. Yeah, it's harder to do in the car. <laughs> <laughs> when you go buy things. I but. spot with my little eyes, something blue. It was those street signs back there. I'm like, 
<laughs> Come on, they, how am I going to get to that? I know, they yeah. do that all the time. It was back there. Like, <laughs> oh, geez. But, <laughs> Five um, exits ago. Yeah, good old classic I spy. And, um, oh, this is a game. It's not a dinner game, but um, we I learned this one from my dad. And it's a fun game that you could play after dinner if you're sitting down in a living room or something. Um, and you, uh, we learned it as hide the cork, I think. And you get a cork or some object and you hide it. It has to be in plain sight. And then it's great because the grown-ups can hide it. And then the kids hide their, close their eyes, don't see where you hide it. It has to be in plain sight so they don't move anything. And then the kids go find it and they have to look for it. And the grown-ups can have a conversation while the kids are like, yeah, trying to find out where it is. Yeah, if you want to the kids, <laughs> hide something. You can hide a matchbox car. You yeah, can hide a, a, yeah. a dice. Anything. Just has to be in plain sight so you don't move anything, which is the beauty of it. Because then they kind of stay still and they or they walk around looking for you know where it is yeah. without messing up your house. It's a good one. Next up is, this is an adult game too. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be careful with this one. <laughs> Two truths and a lie. But we like to play it on a simpler um, term. And it's great because actually they get to know a lot about us because mm-hmm. we've had quite a few adventures in our lives. And We um, keep it G, rated G. Definitely rated G. And um, they get to find out the crazy things that we've done in our lives, like ride a motorcycle or go yeah. scuba diving or, you know. Yeah, I've ridden mm. a motorcycle. I've ridden a submarine. Yeah. I've ridden a race car. I've been to different continents. Nobody will ever guess I've ridden a submarine, but I count the Disneyland oh, yeah. submarines <laughs> as a submarine, so they, they get a kick out of it. Like, oh, yeah, the Disney submarine. Yeah. Their ones are a little bit, their ones are really funny on the two truths and a lie. Yeah. They're, they're, answers or questions. so you get to know a lot more about your kids yeah and sometimes they'll tell you all lies <laughs> like you haven't done any of those things yeah. <laughs> wait have you no. No. yeah and they're like <laughs> oh yeah they're all lies and you're like you're not playing the game properly i know that one's a, <laughs> that one's a funny one and the but. next one is make me laugh speaking of uh, miss laffy here i know I know we uh, we like to do we don't play this one that often because it can get a little bit crazy um, and sometimes we'll play this another like after dinner game or just like when we're sitting around and we try and make each other laugh by telling them a joke. Zachy is the worst. He's oh, really working on yeah. not on like keeping a straight face. We love jokes. And he goes like this. You could see him getting ready. He's just like, OK, I'm ready. And then he just goes <laughs> just laughing. Um, but I used to play this game at summer camp and it was called baby. If you love me, will you give me a smile? And so we kind of play it sometimes and you go up to somebody and you get all like, all as crazy as you can without, without, um, you know, touching touching them them, without touching them. And you go, baby, if you love me, will you give me a smile? And then the other person has to say with a straight face, no smiling. You know? Honey, I love you, but I just can't smile. Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you, but I just can't smile. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the kids, you're you're good. The kids love doing it because they have yeah. a hard time keeping a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we play that. Sometimes we play the laugh. Make me laugh with a joke. Just make them laugh. And we love telling jokes. Yeah. We love telling riddles. Zoe's starting to get them now, which is awesome because before she'd be like, I don't get them. But mm-hmm. it, I mean, even humor is, a, is an exercise. I love using humor because it really gets their mental, the synapses firing because hu- what humor really is, especially if you use puns, it is making connections mm-hmm. with unrelated things and finding the connection. And it makes them funny. And I've definitely noticed growth in Zoe and her sense of humor. Yeah. They'll start yeah. making jokes up, you know, and at first yeah. they're horrible smokes, and then they yeah. start getting better. Yeah. They get better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Um, next up is? Uh, oh, <laughs> Tristan. Tristan's quiz games. He loves quizzing us. On things we don't know about. Yes. So would you want to do a quiz on uh, Pokemon or Minecraft? And we're like, oh gosh. And it's ridiculous. Definitely kind of Pokemon. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What power do you think? No, Minecraft. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Which is more benefit for a farmer? Which mob <laughs> which mob is most beneficial for a farmer? I'm like, what's a mob? 
<laughs> I know. Yeah, so for those of you who know what a mob is... Oh, how many evolutions are there in whatever Pokemon? Yeah. Uh, at least I could guess name a number. three legendary yeah. Pokemon. It's never like, guess a number. It's like name them. Name the... Oh, no. What is the fifth evolution of Frogadier? Like, I don't know. That kind of stuff. So Tristan likes playing quiz games. Um, we indulge him a little bit. Yeah, we don't really play... We don't play them back. As in, we don't quiz him, but... He loves playing quiz games, and so that's one of the stuff we do. Yeah. Another thing we do These is... Are kind of some extra extra games that we like to play, not at the dinner table, but... The shh game. The shh game is a great party game that we just wanted to share with you. Yeah. Share. The more you. people there are in the game, the better it is. Essentially, the way it starts is you go shh. Now, that is a motion and a sound that you do at the same time. You go shh. And so he's passed it to me. He's passed the shh to me. So I can either do the, the sound, shh, and the motion. <laughs> pass it so to the next person. I can pass it to the next person, or I can pass it back to Roy. Yeah. And traditionally, you'd want to go around the circle one whole time first. You can't just start bouncing it off each other. So it would go shh, 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 shh. And then it would get to me. Then I, then I can go shh or shh back. Yeah. And then he does it to me, and I go, oh! oh! So if she messes up, then I get to give her a new sound and a new motion, like, ah! and, so and then we the start next again. round, she starts it with, Bleh! And see he how that goes? Shit. It is so... Ridiculously funny. Funny. It, yeah, we had to share that game with you. I hope you yes. play it because it is so fun. It's so great at family parties. Um, I don't know how it would work over Zoom. But... We've done it with our, our huge <laughs> dance team. We've done it yeah. with field trips with a bunch of people. Yeah. It's really fun. We've done it on youth <laughs> retreats, Boy Scouts. It's really fun. Yeah. It gets ridiculous. Yeah. Next up is? Uh, Amazing Tales, which is, that's it's all It's actually you. a game that is online you if discovered you look up amazing tales it i was looking for a game to introduce them to dungeons and dragons um basically role playing because i wanted them to start cr uh, creatively thinking that way and we stumbled upon amazing tales which is amazing, amazing. it's so good it's basically just guiding a story so most of the story is being told by the children and i have a video that i will be posting about this as well and so they're just telling the story, but it starts off with them creating a character. So they draw the picture of the character, and then they choose three superpowers for that character. So the first one, you roll a six-sided die. The next one, you roll an eight-sided die. And the other one, you roll a 12-sided die. And you have to roll a four, three, two, or one for your superpower to work. That's how it works. But what's amazing is the characteristics of their characters and the oh, superpowers so that they choose for themselves are amazing. There was one that Zoe said, um, yeah, Snow Bunny is the name of all her characters. One of her superpowers was uh, Snow Bunny can melt people's hearts. And of course, I'm going to dig, right? So what does that mean? She's like, well, you know, she can make people who are bad good. She can make people who are sad happy, make me melting their heart. And I was like, okay, so can they make someone fall in love? And she said, no. Smart like, girl. That sounds like the perfect superpower to make somebody fall in love. And then she says, well, you don't want to force somebody to fall in love because they can fall in love and marry somebody. And then they're going to find out they're not happy later on. And I was like, what? holy smokes, <laughs> from a superpower on a game, right? So it, it actually helps them understand character development, um, not just on a story level, but on a very realistic interpersonal level. So Amazing Tales, look it up. The more they play, the <clears throat> more they start exercising. Like, Oh, our kids love it so much. I We were during the whole quarantine, we had a schedule, we'd wake up, and I really tried to balance when they were playing together to allow them to play together, and then we would do our work whenever because it's so important to develop the relationships right with yep. these people that you're living with forever <laughs> in lockdown and um they i would catch them on multiple mornings 
drawing they characters. made up their own amazing tales like they didn't even take out the we have a board game not a, a board book. game but a book for it and they just whatever they had played it so many times they had their paper they, oh, they made their the, own character they, sheets they made their yeah. own character sheets they like knew what they were doing and they were just there like drawing and making these stories and i'm like how They'd can i stop and... them yeah i'm like how can i stop them from doing this it's such amazing work that they're doing and engaging in their brains and uh they just adore it they love it so much so yeah so um for those of you who want amazing a little bit more tales. of a taste basically i'll just start off with uh there are three characters snow bunny rainbow dash and tristan always picks something weird oh he picks e elon or e something like that fire spelled backwards don't tell him i told you that erif 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 so erif snow bunny and rainbow dash are walking through the woods <clears throat> and then a dragon comes out what happens next and then they literally take over the whole story and then they just bounce around. And then you say, oh, so what superpower are we going to use? And then they roll the die and then you continue on the story. And the the whole point of it is you want them to talk as mm -hmm. much as possible. You actually want to talk the least amount as possible. Yeah. Which helps with interviewing. Ah, uh, podcast. <laughs> so if you want to exercise podcasting, play Amazing Tales yeah. with your kids. Yeah. Oh, it's a great game. So those are some of the games we play, just some of the games we play. One of my personal favorites that actually didn't make our list is the sh shush game, the quiet game. Oh. Not the shush game, the, the quiet, quiet game. game. Yes. I can't believe we didn't put that. That's on our list. It's on now. Um, it's on our list. Saving the best for last. The quiet the game. The quiet game actually works with our kids. We don't know how long it will last for, but they are five seven and nine now and um it still, still works still works the best part is when we are mm. driving a uh, long drive from my mom's house which is about an hour hour and a half away and, and they're yelling and screaming at each other and we've had enough of it and it's late well it, even if they're not yelling and screaming at each other we just want them to fall asleep because yeah. we have dinner at my mom's house and hopefully by the time we get home we want them to be asleep we just play the quiet game and they're out yeah so we do in like 10 Three, minutes two one minutes. quiet game quiet. and, and the, you lost <laughs> <laughs> the first one to talk loses and yeah. so they just or make a noise well and usually i'll set it up by l intentionally losing the first couple of rounds so they they know that we're seriously playing like oh man like i'll make oh a noise or something like that or i'll say shelly what Oh man, I just <laughs> lost. And then they'll sit there giggling in the back. And then they'll all go out just because they can't hold it. But then their stamina gets better, bigger, longer and longer. Yeah. And then they end up falling asleep. Yeah. It's a good one. Quiet game's a good one. Even if they don't fall asleep, they're just quiet. It's great. Definitely try it. Yeah. Worst you can do is it doesn't work. <laughs> That's it, I yeah. think. So the list that we have for you guys. We had Would You Rather, mm -hmm. Would I Rather, mm -hmm. Alphabet Game, Merry-Go-Round Storytelling, I Spy, Two Truths and One Lie, Make Me Laugh, and then uh, we had Tristan's Quiz Game, but that's if, it, if any of your kids want to quiz you and you guys want to not know the answers, just ask them to quiz you. Well, and a good that's a good point actually. If your kids want to play a game as ridiculous as it seems, just play it with them. Yeah. Like let them tell you the rules. Don't get frustrated if they break the rules themselves. Or just, don't show your frustration. Yeah, just play it with them. <laughs> I get frustrated all the time. I'm like, yeah. Oh gosh, can't we play something else? <laughs> when I start get, when I start getting frustrated, I just ask questions. Yeah. It it prevents me from that's a good tactic. Externalizing the question, the the frustration is I'll just ask a question. Yeah. Uh, the additional games. Oh, and we also have the quiet game. The quiet game. And the additional games are the shh game with a big group of people. Amazing tales, and there was one that we didn't write down that. The shush game. I mean, the quiet game. No, I felt like there was something else here. No, that was it. Yeah. And if not, they can rewind and find out for themselves. <laughs> If you were paying attention during this video, <laughs> rewind and see what we said. I don't know. You know how they hide they hide things in the videos yep. now? 
Oh, yeah, know? the Easter eggs. You're so hip with the jazz. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so if you can rewind and tell us what we forgot at the very end and hit on the comment, <laughs> write it down in the comments below. We'll see how cool you really are. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us on Creating Creatives, the podcast. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.